This is the helpful lockpicker here, and welcome back to my lockpicking homeschool series. What I'd like to do today is start the segue into security pins. What I have in front of us here are two identical locks. The main difference between the two is one on the bottom here comes with the factory pinning, which is six standard driver pins, and then the one on the top, I added security pins. I added two spools in chambers one and two, two serrated pins in chambers three and four, and two spools in chambers five and six. I'll get more into the specifics on those pins in just a minute, but what I would like to demonstrate for you now is just an example of how much adding security pins can increase the security of your lock with just that one intervention alone. A very commonly asked question when people are starting out is how can I improve the security of my locks? and adding security pins is definitely one of the correct answers. So I'm going to take the unmodified lock now and I'll just show you how easy this one is to open. In general this lock will open any way you try and it is not very secure so it'll be good to see the contrast on how much more secure it can get. So we just got that open with a couple zips. The next thing I'm going to try is what's to see how hard it is to rake it open with my Bogota style rake. So we just rake that in, rake that open in just about a second. And then you can do the traditional single pin picking which opens up fairly quickly as well. Let's see what it takes to get this open by single pin picking. Alright so it took a little bit more time but we got it open. Now let's contrast this lock to the one with the security pins. I'm going to first try to get it open by raking it and then I may try to combination zip it. So I'm going to do light tension here and just rake away. The first thing I'm noticing is a increase in the friction on the pins. They're not moving as much because these pins really get caught up and can get in the way. So I gotta really do light tension and hope I can set these driver pins. And as you can tell, only a few of them are setting and I'm not able to get all of them. Now I'm gonna maintain light tension and try to give it a zip. And I'm just gonna try to go through my bag of tricks here and see if we can get this lock to open with a non-skilled technique. And it does not seem like it wants to open. So what I'm going to do now is show you how single pin picking is the most reliable way to get security pins open and I'm going to go into more detail on them in just a moment here. Let's see, I think pin one's last to bind and we got the lock open. So what I'd like to do next is just go over the various security pins that you may run into. What I have in front of us are the most common driver pins that you will most likely run into in your lock picking journey. In position 5 here, you should be very familiar with this pin. This is a standard driver pin. This is probably the most common driver pin that you will run into. These driver pins are very susceptible to rocking, raking, zipping, lock bumping, any of the non-skilled attacks, they work very well on these pins. And because of these pins being exploited very easily, security pins were developed to help stop that. I'm going to put up a close-up of this pin for you in just a moment. In position four, you can see an example of a spool pin. These pens get their name because they do have the shape of a spool. When you look at the inside diameter, it is a lot thinner than the outside diameter. And this is precisely how these pens take advantage of the picking process and make it more difficult. When you are trying to lift a spool pen to the shear line and you have to apply that rotational pressure, the middle of the spool is going to get stuck. It's going to get stuck in between the Bible and the plug. And when it gets stuck on that thin area, the plug may turn like it's going to open, but it will not. In order to set this pin, you're going to have to lift it, and it's going to cause counter-rotation. As you're pushing against that counter-rotation, you run the risk of dropping all the pins that you've already set and having to reset the lock. 
this pin becomes very important in determining the true binding order, which is something we'll get into down the road. And I'll get you a nice close-up of this pin in just a minute. I would like to quickly show you an example of what a false set looks like. Take a look at the two black dots here. When you start to get into a false set, they will start to separate. What a false set is, is any lock that has spool pins, when you have set all the non-spool pins, such as standard and serrated pins, the plug will get caught up in the middle of the spool pins, but it will start to turn over like it's going to open, because the inner diameter of the spool pins is much smaller. What you'll need to do is probe each key pin, searching for counter-rotation, and once you find that, hopefully you will be able to get the lock open. So I'm going to show you an example now. Just pay attention to the two black lines. Okay, so we have a false set. You can see that the two black lines are getting separated. Now I'm going to probe for a pen that's going to give me some counter rotation, which pen 2 is, I'm going to set that and the lock opened. Pen 2 is, I'm going to set that and the lock opened. When I set the counter rotation, I let it push back against me as I was lifting, but I was still tensioning in the direction that I needed to to get the lock open. In position 3 and 2, these are two examples of serrated driver pins. The 1 and 3, this one's kind of half serrated. When you look up the body, you can see all those fine serrations. And in 2, this is a serrated driver pin from an American lock, and it's very finely serrated all the way up through the top. When you're picking these pens, light tension is a must. They give very good feedback. You can feel them clicking up each way into position, but since you have to apply rotational force to set pens, these can get very stuck up in the plug in the Bible and be very difficult to lift up to the shear line, and many of them get stuck in the underset state. When you are dealing with a serrated pen, you always got to be very careful with your tension and light tension as a must. And I'm going to get you a close-up of these two pens in just a second. The addition of security pens can do a really great job at stopping non-skilled attacks from opening up locks such as raking, rocking, zipping, and lock bumping. Spools are probably the most common pen that you're going to run into, but serrated pens are becoming more and more common. When you are starting to learn to pick security pens, you may get a little scared trying to learn them. They are a little bit intimidating at first. But one thing, it's a phenomenon that many people go through, is they start to master security pens pretty quickly, and they get very reliant on the very strong feedback that they give. I truly feel security pens, they may do a good job at preventing low skill level attacks, but I truly feel that they make single pen picking much easier because of the heightened feedback that you get from them. And by the time you master security pens, often you have to go back and remaster standard pens because they do not provide the same feedback and they provide a different feel. But luckily on those, even if you need to go back and master them, typically you can get them open with a lower level attack like raking, rocking, zipping, or bumping. In conclusion, the combination between all of these pens really can make a lock a lot different. As you saw on my clear acrylic lock, the one that was penned up with all standard pens opened up however I tried. I was able to zip it, rake it, single pin pick it without any resistance at all. But as soon as I added security pens, the raking and zipping technique failed very quickly. But since I am very used to picking security pens and feel very comfortable with them, I was able to single pin pick it even quicker than I was with the one with all the standard pens. It provides tremendous feedback. 
as with anything, just always remember to practice, practice, practice. If you ever need to progressive pen a lock to get the feel, that is a great technique as well. This has just been an overview on security pens, just so you can get a visual idea of what they look like and their general purpose in a lock. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking this out and I hope you have a great day.